Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent, Cody's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. I've heard quite a bit about you from Lady from Lady Spring, Cassian. I hope that Galantira has been treating you well. Lady Spring? You mean Alyssa? Ah, so you know her by alias as well. Good. I'd make talking about her easier between us. Y yes, sir. And the guild has been treating me well. I've been helping out. I've been helping out at the Honeysuckle Tavern and received training from him too. Cody, is that what you go by now, Dimitri? E yeah. Uh, yes. It's better to just drop the old nicknames if that's okay. Very well. So what brings you both here today? Well, Max told us to report our findings to you. Oh, excuse me. I see. Make yourselves comfortable then. As you both headed over to the guest table and sat down at the sofa, you took a quick look around the office. There were quite a few bookshelves, cabinets, and glass displays. Most of them were of what looked like his own book collections, documents, or just decorative trinkets. Jewelry and keepsakes from people he'd met. Or at least you'd assume so, given the small notes with names and locations placed beneath each of them. There were also a lot of paintings that were the walls. One of them did pique your interest the closer you looked. Must be Alaric. Yep, and that tiger. Huh. They look really similar. Wait, is that? Ha, huh, yes. You're looking at Alex's family. Alex? He looks pretty different there. Indeed. The photo was taken quite a long time ago, when Alex was initially enrolled into the Academy and was put in the same class as his friends. Huh, you mean the same class as Cody, too? He looked over to the bear, who only seemed to keep his eyes away from the picture. As you briefly exchanged glances, you noticed his eyes didn't speak of sorrow, only regret. Yes, Alex was in the same class and now the same team as did mm, Cody here. I'd like to ask about the painting, but I guess now isn't a good time. Oh, well. So, what has your team discovered? Um, well, I won't pretend that I understand much of what was discussed. But from what the others have researched, there was nether traces inside the soil. The soil? Which soil? Around the park, I think. It had something to do with the fertilizers. At least that's what Rye said. <sighs> fertilizers? Why? Why, I did ask for specialized fertilizers for our city. But what's the connection here? Hmm, after a bit of back and forth, we came to the theory that maybe they put the nether stuff inside the fertilizer. I see. That is indeed a possibility. I never considered it to be done that way. Anything else to report, then? No, I think that's all for now. Wait, why did you order special fertilizers for the city? Ha, ah, that. Well, you see, the nether plague has decimated much of the landscape throughout this continent. No matter where you go, you simply cannot grow crops for sa crops that are safe for consum consumption. Hence, my remediation project began years ago. By importing plants with certain properties, we can slowly purify Crystal Coast soil so that our agriculture can resume. Yeah, Fido, uh, something, Alex said. Uh, plants that can absorb minerals and crystallize them or something. Uh, I used to plant Yamatos once, and they all turned into solid balls of geode. You mightn't be familiar with the terminology, but I am certain you've grasped the concept just as well as the others, Cody. But, hmm, something still puzzles me about this. Our scientists have already conducted regular tests to make sure the soil composition remains within bounds. I think Alex said something about it being spread out and adding up over time. If I understand this, then when the, uh, with the amount of trees in the park, this really adds up. I see. I think I understand where Alex is getting at. However, what are the odds? Have they made a mistake? Lapse in my judgment? Alex said to himself as he paced back and forth. Wait, where did I hear this from before? What about the Guardian Crystal? should be okay, sir. Alex has been keeping an eye on it, running tests and making sure it's still fine. I see. That's one good news, at least. Very well. I shall inform the mercenaries on this matter, as well as conducting a thorough investigation on the personnel I've appointed to the remediation project. I guess you already know what to do next. Indeed. And Cody? Huh, huh y yes sir. I must personally thank you for coming here to speak with me today, given that we haven't seen each other for quite some time, and the last time was about... Uh, hey, please, Alaric, you don't have to say it like that. I admit that I still f I admit that I still find myself unworthy of the mercenary title. Even Max is displeased with my performances of late. Uh, the guild has given me a lot, but instead of doing more to give back, I just run the tavern nowadays. I I believe I've heard enough. Oh? Huh. Let's not kid ourselves here, shall we? Indeed, we've all been through so much amidst this unfortunate cataclysm. You have sacrificed, but you have sacrificed so much by, by being here, by going here, Cody. 
You see, people of the old continent still hold certain prejudices against outlanders, namely people of the far north. The guildmaster looked to you as he said that last. It is my understanding that you chose to stay behind when your parents returned to your homeland. At the time, you had very little to yourself. You learned how to speak our common. You also got rid of your accents just so you can fit in better. You weren't the best at studying, but your patience and perseverance has helped you pull through. You are a fierce warrior, and now a compassionate chef. Which, I must admit, is not a change of character I'd expected. But nevertheless, I'm very pleased with who you are today, Cody. So try not to undervalue yourself, then you'll... <laughs> well, uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. I trust that you both won't disclose what we've discussed to the public. You are... Come in. Hey, did I come at a bad time? Oh, Dima. I mean, Cody, what are you doing here? We merely did a bit of catching up, if you will. Ah, gotcha. Good afternoon, Master Alaric, sir. Good afternoon. What brings you two here today? We're here to check on Cassie and report our findings, sir. Ah, I already, oh, I already did that, Max. Really? Indeed. He's explained enough to me. It's quite a predicament we're facing. For what the, for that, I'd require your... For that, I'd require your further diligence in the investigation, Maxwell. Understood, Master Alaric. We'll also need to speak privately with Tobias here. Oh? You have assignments for me to- I mean, sir? Indeed. You three are dismissed. Yes, sir. Ordini Prosperita. Ordini Prosperita. Ah, yes. Cassian? Yes, sir? I'm glad we finally meet in person. Had it been any other occasions, I would have held a more proper welcoming ceremony for new recruits, but alas. No, it's okay, sir. I understand the gravity of the situation. The guild has also provided much for me. I can't thank you enough, sir. I am pleased to hear. And Cody? Yes. Take care of yourself. That's an order. All right. I mean, yes, sir. Good. Now, if you'd excuse us, we'll be on our way. All right. Bye, Max, Cody, Cassian. After leaving Alaric's office, you headed back to the elevator with Max and Cody. Hmm. Max? Huh? What's up? What gives? I reported to Alaric just like you asked me to. Did you really think I would forget my way to his office, or I would chicken out? Hey now, I don't mean any of that. I was just making sure the report is done properly is all. Look, I apologize if I said anything harsh, okay? I don't mean it. Alright. So, what do we do now? Hmm. Just about lunchtime. You should get something to eat. Then you two are free to do your thing for the day. Now that you've reported to Alaric, it's up to him to act as he sees fit. I guess so. And, well, some juicy buffalo steak would be real nice right about now. Say, Cody, could we grab lunch at the tavern? <clears throat> sure, but it won't be me cooking the food. That's fine. I'm curious to see how good this new cook of yours is. And so you follow the two to the tavern. You finally sat down after squeezing through the lunch crush queue at the entrance. Ashford was quick to swing by to take your orders, though he seemed to be so busy he couldn't even bother mustering a welcome back, Cody to, welcome back to Cody. He didn't seem to mind, though. Max and Cody were having a small debate about how fresh the hunted meat and harvested produce have to be to truly make a delectable meal. They sure are taking their time. Sorry, Cassian. It's a lunch rush. You know how it is. I mean, being on the receiving end of it was brutal, but I guess sitting here waiting for a meal is just as bad. Should I call for Ash, then? He'll probably swing by in a bit. I believe that won't be needed, gents. The voice startled you as the person set three plates of food in front of you, which was quite impressive with how much he had managed to balance the extra plate on his sleeve. It wasn't the Snow Leopard, so it must have been the new chef Cody kept mentioning. It was a canine, a German Shepherd. The lilt in his tone didn't quite match with his decently large form, though the pair of glasses gave him that learned scholarly look. Ah, Tensei! You're delivering the food yourself? Ah, oh, boss, good afternoon, and you two must be his friends. Afternoon to you gents as well. The German Shepherd gave a curtsy bow at Cody, then at you and Max. Well, I happened to see Ashford trying to juggle five orders in a row, so I decided to deliver the next one myself instead of waiting for him to get back. Hmm, I see. Is something the matter, boss? You sound taken aback. Ah, nothing. I just wonder what's gotten into him today. Our rush hours are usually this busy, but today he didn't even bother stopping to say a simple hello to me. Oh, I think he's just in a real hurry. You see, he came in quite late this morning and had a lot of work to catch up on since you're away. I wouldn't think too much of it if I were you, boss. Just try to enjoy your meal with your friends here. The chef gave Cody a knowing smile as he seemed rather relieved. All right, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Hey, Tensei, is it? 
Yes, that's me. How may I be of service? Oh, you've already done us a service by bringing the food yourself. Just wanted to say that I've heard quite a bit about you through Cody, so I'm eager to see how good your cooking is compared to his. Well then, I certainly hope it'd, it'd shape up nicely to his much-deserved reputation. Oh, that's right. If you gents happen to swing by later for dinner, I'd love to sit down and have a chat. Sure. If these two are too busy for that, I'll be there to chat with you, Sensei. Oh, that'd be, that'd be a real pleasure, boss. See you later at dinner, Rush. Now, I need to do. A, I need to get back to the kitchen, so please excuse me. Bon appetit. With a shallow bow, the canine disappeared behind the crowd of patrons passing by before you knew it. Hmm. What's up, Cassian? Is something wrong? Oh, nah, this new chef guy you, you hired, Cody. He seems like a cool guy. Agreed, his demeanor is pretty nice. I can see why you'd leave the tavern to him and Ash, Cody. I guess so. I wasn't expecting much when I posted the employment notice the other day, but I guess I struck gold. Sure. But let's see if, the, let's see if his cooking is the same, or he's just all talk. Alright, let's eat. Cheers. And so you dug into the food, and almost immediately the three of you were rendered speechless. Out of curiosity, you agreed with Cody and Max to exchange a bite from each other's plate. You all had ordered three buffalo steaks, and they were of nearly identical quality. The familiar juiciness and smoky taste was there, the spices and seasoning was all Cody's signatures, and yet somehow the chef could elevate it further. Perhaps his technique was sharper? The timing was more precise. Or maybe you all were too hungry so the steak tasted more amazing than it actually was. Regardless, Max was praising the chef non-stop. Cody was also delighted at first. Until you noticed his eyes lowering, and almost immediately you could notice the sadness on his face. Max's vocal praises weren't really helping either, but eventually Cody just started laughing and chuckling along with it, even though you could tell he wasn't in the best mood. After finishing the meal, Max parted ways to do his own investigations, while you and Cody returned to the main lobby. Hmm, what should I do now? You went to check the request board. Unfortunately, all the requests seem to have been taken at this hour. Ah, oh, bummer. Ah, oh, well, it happens. Don't think too much about it, Cassie. There's always plenty of requests tomorrow. Yeah, I guess so. Well, we can do something else, then. Yeah. Let's go to the gym. Oof, oof, oof. Let me drink some of my soda. Mm. Cactus Cooler is pretty damn good. Y'all in the comments, if y'all have a special soda or a uh, or a drink that y'all really enjoy, let me know in the comments. My particular favorite is uh, pe uh, Soda Pop, the Pecan Praline uh, flavor. It's delicious. It's like drinking carbonated syrup. I know that sounds disgusting, but it tastes incredible. Anyway. Alrighty, let's go to the gym. Oh, actually, let's go to the... Uh, yeah, okay. We'll do strength. Yeah. Maybe that was it. Oh, no, I think Cody's endurance. Ah, endurance training. You've come to the right person for this. Wait, wait, Cody. I'm not real. Ah! You're pulled away from a typical for a typical endurance routine, which mostly consists of you trying to shrug off or deflect hits from Cody while stationary. All right, that should do. You did well, Cassian. Did I? Uh, both my arms feel so numb. You sure don't pull any punches, huh? Oops, sorry. I keep forgetting that you're still recovering, Cassian. It's all right. I'll be fine. You really are pretty strong, Cody. Huh. I guess we Svobodians are built different. We can withstand hard weather, hard weathers, and harsh conditions. He said, beaming with pride. So, you like things hard and harsh? Um, <laughs> uh... Wait, that came out wrong. I I'm not supposed to be Ray. Oh, God. Sure. So, what's it like in Svobodia, actually? Well, for one, it's really cold back there. The terrain is nothing but snow and mountains all around. Most of us are used to the harsh weather, but we could only stay in the settlement we were born in. Only people who are trained to navigate the blizzards can venture out to another settlement. Such as who? Hmm, it's been a while, let me think. Kortsi, Straniki, Sibirachi. What's the word again? All right, guardsmen, pilgrims, and scavengers. These people can come and go freely no matter the weather situation. Ooh, guardsmen, huh? Were you one of them, Cody? It sounded like something you made something made for you. Ha! <laughs> Thanks, Cassian, but no, I never qualified. Never qualified the Okarazi trials. There's trials for that? Man. But what would happen if you qualified? Would you stay in Svobodia then? I guess I would have. Maybe I would stay in El stay in Olgograd and work for Father Grigory Grigory at the monastery. I remember my parents talking about the Hiramva shrine all the time. Maybe I'd have worked there instead. Life must be very different over there. Indeed, Svobodia is harsher all year round, but things are things around there are a lot calmer than here. But I guess I, I guess I would have liked a quiet life yet. 
I'm still so used to putting myself on the forefront for others. You're pretty awesome, Cody. Ha, <laughs> thank you. Feel more durable now. Uh, is there anything at the library? I'm kind of curious. You head to the library. Could have followed you along. Oh. The library? You come here often, Cassian? Not really, but I do try to learn as much as I can whenever I'm here. Okay, I'll go with you then. I might not be good with a lot of subjects, but cookbooks are pretty good to read. Here, I think I borrowed this one a while back. Cody reached for a book on the cuisine shelves. Arborea Cuisine Crash Course 101 is what the title says. Right. He briefly went through the most notable dishes in the book, sometimes going on mild sometimes going on mild tangents about how they should be prepared, and little nuances about technique and ingredients prep, etc. If you're more so interested in the various dishes of this world, aside from some very different ingredients, a lot of them bore great similarities to the ones back in your world. Some of them even had the exact same names. From the savory placentos of Rhode Island to the paella of Gal the paella of to the paella of Galicchio. Galicchio? Galicchio? Galicchio. Galicchio. And the various pasta dishes of Polaria. Not to mention the poutine that Cody loved to, to love to make so much. Yeah, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> no. And Alan had quite a lot of staples. A lot of stir-fried rice and noodle dishes. Sushi, shashimi, and other seafood dishes were well-known around the Frozen Lake region. There was this chukasoba dish Cody described that sounded just like ramen to you, but maybe it was just called differently in, differently in Hainan. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.